Hello everyone, Rika here, and welcome back to Digimon Survive. So, uh, we're gonna pick up where we left off with, uh, Dracomon, so, uh... Yeah, it sounded like it had some sort of grudge against us for partnering with you. He did seem upset about us forming bonds with human children. All the more reason I'd rather not fight him again. He'd be targeting all of you specifically. Takuma. <coughs> Takuma, don't worry about us. Fighting to keep you safe is what we're here for. Yeah, that's right. Please do not forget that we fight to protect Minoru and to protect all of you. Hear that? I feel like we should really let them protect us. Alright, if Garuruman shows up again, then that's what we'll do. But we'll look out for all of you, too. Yeah, that's the Takuma I know. It'll work out, it has to. <laughs> well, things were touch and go for a while, but uh, for a while there, but thanks to you, we're saved. It's been quite eventful since her rowdiness arrived, but you protected this place well. Thank you for that, human children, and our good queen. I'm not really a queen. Just call me Miyu. Oh, then will you be leaving here to travel with your brother and his companions? Yeah, is that okay, Kaito? No, go away, Miyu. We didn't come all this way out here to save you or anything. It's more than okay. I'm glad to have you back, Miyu. And obviously, I will be going with Miyu as well. Of course, uh, even if I'm done being queen, I'll never be done with you, Siakoman. <laughs> Isn't this great, Kaito? Practically, all you ever talked about is how worried you were about Miyu. Well, I'm her brother, what do you expect? I'm really glad you were able to rescue Miyu. Like... <clears throat> well, I guess that takes care of that. Ready to go back, everyone? Go back? Where? Oh. Back to the school. I mean, it's the closest thing we have to a home here. Yes, that's... that's as close as it gets. Sobering moment for everyone. When I said we should go back, I only meant we should return to the school. But if it wound up being a reminder that we still can't go back, uh, where we really belong... Why does everyone look so sad all of a sudden? They can't help it. Aoi and her friends want to go back to their real homes. Well, it would seem that you all long to return to the world which you originally came from. Of course I do. I mean, maybe my life wasn't perfect, but even I want to go back. 
But, but how can we? Saki, please don't look so sad. I'm sorry, Floramon. It's just, I can't help it when it comes to this. Since ancient times, children from the human world have sometimes found themselves here. Apparently, upon certain occasions, the border between our wor our two worlds grows thin. Uh, what's that supposed to mean? <coughs> Is it like a door that normally stays shut occasionally swings open? Yes, I suppose that might be a, another way of putting it. So you think we might have wandered into this world while the border was thin? Well, you may not have simply wandered in. You may have been brought here. What? But what would bring us here and how? You mean Saki and her friends were kidnapped away from their world? I don't know, and I don't exactly remember being dragged here, but that- But you all were passed out at that one point! You- <coughs> Oh gosh, I'm- I'm di- Oh god! <coughs> anyway. Ah. <coughs> uh, you guys wouldn't have known what was happening at that point. <coughs> yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it wasn't anything physical. Maybe we got drawn in or something. That could be it. After all, this world is nothing like our own. Haru, Miyuki, do you... But what about you two? Do you remember anything about how you got here? No, not a thing. Not a thing. Oh, okay then. I guess all we can say for sure is that other children have come here before, like us. Based on what Jijimon told us, yes. Uh, from what the professor said, if this is the world from... The legends of the Kimonogami. Then lots of human children may have come here over the years. <coughs> they probably got sacrificed. So what happened to those children? Where'd they go? I'd never seen any humans before you and your friends showed up, Takuma. Yeah, me neither. But haven't we heard some monsters mentioning offering human children as sacrifices? I doubt that was just a wild guess or something. So, has this thing been happening for a long time? Ugh, that'd be awful. Indeed, those who kidnap children have been around for longer than I can remember. So you're saying human children have been coming here since the distant past? 
Only to be offered up by as sacrifices by those things? As I understand it, they seek a way to save our world from the fog that is consuming it. Uh, let's see. In truth, every time those hands, which we call the Kenzoku, take in a human child, the fog lifts, the destruction ceases, and the spaces swallowed up by the void return. Oh, what are you all talking about? Human sacrifices, the fog that swallows things up? Right, I forgot. You still don't know about the fog. So, what is it exactly? Nothing you need to worry. It is way scarier re not really knowing that what you're talking about, so just tell me. She has a point, Kaito. I think we should tell her what we can. Fine, but it's not like we know that much ourselves. All we know is that if you get swallowed up by it, you're gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? Like, you die? Why? That doesn't make any sense. This is what we've been trying to tell you. This world is a very dangerous place. I... I didn't know about anything like that. Mew looks completely horrified, not that I blame her, having just learned about this. Honestly, I'm not sure I'm over it either. I remember the dark arms reaching for Ryo. Countless kids got grabbed by those things. Why? What's wrong with this place? I don't get it. They offer up children and... What? I'm afraid I can't offer you... I can offer you no explanation. You might say it's the work of our god. However, there are, of course, many who object to such methods. Take myself, for instance, or any here in the park. Surely your partners feel similarly. You better believe it, I'm not about to let those losers get their hands on Takuma. I feel the same way about Aoi. And that's how I feel about Kaito. But what you're saying is all the kids who wandered in here before... I can't imagine any of them survived. Were all of them offered as sacrifices? As to that, I could not say. Human children do not appear often. Some are offered as sacrifices, others just vanish. They vanish? So they get back to their world then. Oh. That is something the Digidestin could do in the second series. They just held their digivices up to the computer and they were able to go into the digital world at will. 
I hear in the past there were those who could cross between dimensions at will. Is that true? I'm telling you, I don't know any specifics. I've never left the bounds of this world. But yeah, that makes sense. If the legends still exist in our world, there must be kids who made it back, right? Oh, yeah. You're right. Some kids may have made it back to our world. Maybe even some monsters, too. If you think about that fact, that the legend of the Kimonogami exists, that makes sense! In other words, depending on what happens, I could go to your world, Minoru? Hey, that sounds fun! I want to see what your world is like, Saki! So there may be a way back after all. Indeed, in fact, I might even recall something that may help you. This is something I once heard from a friend. There's a technique some humans know that can thin the boundary between worlds. Using this technique, some children were able to return to the human world. My friend who told me this saw the opening of the door between the worlds with his own eyes. And they weren't just taken by something like those strange ghostly hands? Indeed, apparently this was something quite different. But how would this friend of yours know the difference? Those who strengthened their bonds apparently gained a shared sense with their humans. They knew where their partners their partner was, how they were feeling, and whether they still lived. So they could sense that their friends were still uh, were alive on the other side of the door. Though apparently this sense did not continue forever. So this friend of yours didn't stay with the human child they bonded with? Sounds like they didn't. I wouldn't want to be separated from Takuma like that. Oh, good one. <coughs> oh, not that I'm saying I don't want Takuma to go home. If there is a way back, I want to go with Takuma to his world. Yeah, I'd like it if we could go back together. Well, in any case, that is the extent of my knowledge on the subject. So you're saying that maybe, just maybe... So there's a chance we'll be able to go back! Oh, what a relief! 
Yeah, man, this is great news. Miyu, did you hear that? We might be able to go back. Yeah. Don't you think that's good news? I guess, but the amusement park was way more fun than anything back in our world. Sounds like Miyu has some things to work out still. But at least we're now we now have hope. So we really might be able to go back. Well, I think it's a little early to start celebrating. What makes you say that? Jijimon's explanation has not has been nothing but hearsay. Well, I've told you all I know. So, you can't say if it's really true, and you don't have any kind of proof, do you? And I find this strange connection between humans and monsters pretty hard to believe. Shuji's inability to connect with Lop Mom probably has something to do with that. Uh, your points are fair, however, there is some evidence. Some things I've seen for myself. Many times I have witnessed the strong bond between my friend and their human child. Though it was long ago and my memories have faded, yet had that child been sacrificed, my friend would not have fared well. Those with such strong bonds share the same fate. That would be awful. And yet my friend still lives. This in itself is proof that the child is alive somewhere. I thought that might be the case. That must be why Kunmon vanished along with Ryo. You're right. I've been so focused on losing Ryo that I never really thought about it. But Kunmon went with him, didn't he? Yeah, poor thing. But does this boundary thinning technique really exist? I don't believe it. It does sound too good to be true. Human children using some special technique to thin the boundary between worlds? How? That is a question for one more familiar with the sacrifices in the border between worlds. Is there anyone like that we can ask? The kidnappers likely know something. They have ties to the being who rules this world. You think we should ask the kidnappers? No way! Wait a minute. Wait a minute, who's the one who rules this world? An individual not quite the same as our god or creator. It's little more than legend, but supposedly there's a being who rules this world. Well, 
In other words, a caretaker of all creation, a being who protects and rules us all. Perhaps if you were to appeal to that being, you might just get your wish. Shuji? You're in another dimension with talking monsters! How in the world is anything crazier than that? <sighs> Look, stop filling us with false hope, okay? That story's even crazier than the last one. Bringing up this god or whatever doesn't help us at all. Perhaps not, but even if you can't speak with the, this ruler, what about the kidnappers? You want us to ask a monster like Arukenimon or Garurumon what's going on? At the very least, they know enough to offer a child on an altar and summon the Kenzoku. It doesn't matter what they know, asking them about it might as well be suicide. I agree. We are lucky to be alive through what we did today. Maybe, but didn't it seem like that dog thing, Garurumon or whatever, might tell us? Minoru, are you seriously considering this? Can you somehow or can you somehow have already forgotten how fearsome he was? But didn't the Garurumon guy basically ignore us? Yeah, and it seemed like he turned on the one who was with him. So you're saying there may be some of them who will hear us out? I believe that is a real possibility. No way! It's easy to see why Shuji would be concerned about this. At the same time, though, it's not like we have any other leads or how to get home. So, do we approach Garurumon and the kidnappers and spite the risks? Because it seems like the safest thing to do would be to just avoid them at all costs. Then again, if all we do is run and hide, who knows if we'll ever manage to get back. But... Are those really our only options? Maybe we could come up with some alternative. I think we keep thinking. Could there be an alternative that doesn't involve confronting the kidnappers? An alternative like what? I don't know, like maybe we could talk to Chijibon's friend directly. Unfortunately, I have no idea where my old friend might be. Guess that's out. Then maybe we could start by asking any other monsters if they know anything. Isn't that pretty risky too? Who knows what other kind of monsters we might run into. Yeah, this world is full of all sorts of monsters. Good, bad, peaceful, aggressive. I guess that's true. And since we don't know if any of them know anything, that's not a realistic option. So 
So it's sounding like our only real choice is to go to the kidnappers. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And Aru Kenimon did say something interesting the other day. You mean how she called us sacrifices? That was pretty hard to miss, wasn't it? Uh, if the world's destruction can be halted by such means, our ruler must be involved. Okay, well... Therefore, the kidnappers may know much more about this subject than I do. Well, if they're our only lead, we'll just have to make them talk, now won't we? Would you give it a rest already? You're always so quick to pick a fight. I know, right? Kaito is such a thug. What other option is there? Okay, they may be scary and they may be up to no good, but we can still talk to them. Maybe we can negotiate? Or something, I don't know. Nah, they ain't the type to listen to reason. We'll have to beat the answers out of them. You don't know that. Sorry, but I'm with Kaito on this one. I just don't know where we can find them or how we can make them talk. All we have to do is wait. They'll definitely try to kidnap, kidnap us again, right? But if we wait for them, don't you think they'll have us at a disadvantage? Yeah, that seems ill-advised. Not how I like doing things anyway. With Haru, Miyuki, and Miyu with us, we should try to minimize our risk. My sister and I could wait in the school. We'd be fine. Fine. No, I will not allow that. Well, what if we took the initiative? Uh, how do we do that? Do y do you even know where to find them? I've got a pretty good idea. They came in from the north, which leads to the sea. And what do you think is beyond that? I see, oh right, I forgot this place is an island. Wait, you can't mean... Yeah, we just gotta cross the sea to attack. But how? It's not like we've got a boat, let alone an airplane. Hey, what are those? Uh, they're different kinds of vehicles. Boats float on water and airplanes can fly. You mean you've never seen anything like them before? Nope, never. Unfortunately, I can't say I have either. I doubt any of us has. Yeah, that that's what I figured. Between the cable car and the theme park, I thought there was a chance, but maybe not. There are monsters who can swim, 
that stay by the water, but I doubt they'd carry us. Yeah, that doesn't seem very likely. Unless maybe one of those monsters was a giant turtle that could carry us on its back. Of course, if a monster like that swam underwater, we'd probably all drown. So what do we do? Oh, I've got it! Huh, Minoru? What's with that all of a sudden? I just had the best idea. What are you talking about? Remember how when we went to the dam there was a place that went underground? You know, the door that had a crazy design on it? You think if maybe we went through, we'd come out on the other side of the ocean? Oh yeah, the underground waterway! Right, that's what you call it. Anyway, it's basically an underwater tunnel. I do believe the directions do line up. However, the door was locked. Did you not say it wouldn't open? Hmm, in that case... I hope this might be of use to you. Is it the key? It's the key! Uh, Gigimon? What's that? It looks like some type of key. Oh. And hey, the pattern looks like the one we saw at the door! The ones who attacked this place had it hidden away. I haven't the foggiest idea what it might be used for, though. This could be just what we need! Maybe we'll have to go check it out. Yeah, looks like we know what our next goal is now. Yeah, looks like it. First, we need to see if we can use this key to open the door to the underground waterway. Then, if it works, we can take the waterway across the ocean. Okay. Sounds like we've got a thing. After getting the key from Gigi Mom, we left the park and returned to the school. In part because it was too late to try the waterway, but mostly because... We were exhausted, especially Miyu, who fell asleep just as soon as we got back. Her relief at having Kaito by her side again probably had something to do with it. As for me... Could we really go back? Takuma, you're not going to sleep? Oh, Agumon, sorry, did I wake you? No, I've been up. Something on your mind, Takuma? Um, I guess you could say that. It's more like, now that I know there might be a real way for us to go home, I'm kind of excited. Oh, that's it. Everyone did seem pretty lively at dinner. Yeah, I guess they did. Yeah, 
Minoru kept going on and on about finally being able to read comics again. And then everyone fell asleep not long after we left. Yeah, they all worked really hard today. They sure did. But I think you worked harder than anyone. You do? Absolutely. You're really something else, Takuma. I'm proud to be your partner. I don't know what it is about... Uh, I don't know what it is, but hearing Agumon say that really warms my heart. Well, I'm proud to be your partner too, Agumon. Oh, that makes me so happy. Thanks, Takuma. Haha, <laughs> you're welcome. Hey, what are you two doing? Oh, it's Kaito and Drachmon. What's up? Hmm? Something smells tasty. Oh yeah, you're right. I was feeling kind of hungry, that's what woke me up. You mean you got up for a snack? Don't let Aoi catch you. Yeah, keep this quiet, okay? Yeah, she could be downright fierce when she gets mad. Yeah. So as Miyu, she fell asleep pretty soon after we got back. She did. She's not injured or anything, so I don't think anything's wrong, but... For all she went on about how fun that amusement park was and how she wanted... Uh, how she wanted to stay there with everyone being on her own must have been stressful. Yeah, yeah I'm really glad we found her. jeez. Oh, so look, thanks for everything. Huh? I just feel like I leaned on you guys a lot today. What's this? Kaito being open and honest about how he feels for once? No way! Pretty hard to believe. Oh, shut up, both of you. But seriously, I don't think we would have found her if it wasn't for you, Takuma. So thanks. You helped us as much as we helped you. And we'll be really counting on you tomorrow. <laughs> then leave it to me. And me, don't count me out. Oh, and me too, me too! Right, I'll be counting on both of you too. We'd better get back. Well, I'd better be getting to bed. Tomorrow's gonna be a tough one. Yeah. We'd better rest up. Is that the end of another part? Because if it is, this might be a good spot to stop. It is the end of another part, so we're going into part five. I wonder how many parts there are. Alright, well, yeah, this is definitely a good spot to stop, because obviously something's going to go really wrong with Shuji here. And probably because I don't have a very good affinity with him, he's probably going to be our next death, which... 
might actually be a blessing for Lopmon, to be honest, because he's been nothing but cruel to her the whole time. But that's a story for another day and a thought for another day. It's not that I want to see that. I would actually like to see them, you know, become friends and, and bond, but Shuji's so stubborn, I don't know if that'll ever happen. So, well, we'll see you in the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And just remember, everything blue is awesome. Rika, signing out.